Hello and welcome to a new episode of the devlog of Ruins of Ariel. Um, today I will show you some extra things I've added here. So uh, in the main menu, as you'll see here, there is a, an extra item called collectibles. And it's kind of a, some kind of a meta progression here where we have uh, some extra interface to see the collectibles. So before we had the collectibles here for the creatures, yeah, I've already collected five, but I've also added some extra collectibles here, uh, collectible for gems. So there's also nine different gems you can collect. And so this is the interface uh, that you can see uh, the collectibles you've collected. So this is uh, extra. What I've done also is if I go to the library and you go to the cards, you'll see that I'll have uh, the number of cards, the number of times a certain card has been used. You see here, this is card has never been used. This card has been used once. And if I go and scroll here to the more uh, cards which are in the starter deck, this one, for example, or this one, these have uh, been used multiple times. So this is a card, a card usage statistic. Actually, it's an, an extension on the statistics which are already in the game. Um, so uh, here you have these card statistics and the statistics you already know. Here are in the statistics here. So you can see here. Uh, fire cost, cards played, etc. So it's only been recently reset. So um, this extra statistics, cool, cool. So uh, what I've also done um, is if I go to the journey here, uh, I'll abandon the journey and then I can create a new journey. And then I've added some extra hints here for the different difficulty levels. So on the easy difficulty level, uh, you start the journey with 10,000 coins and add five random scrolls. The creatures are weaker, you get the more loot, the three receive uh, three extra random cards to start the journey and start with a bag full of goodies. Here. Also goodies, but two extra cards, stronger creatures, and only 500 coins and three random scrolls. And here, no, without coins, one random scroll, strong creatures, one card and an empty bag. So this makes it a bit more difficult. And then you'll see if I choose one, for example, I choose medium, for example, and I choose the character, then you'll see here that uh, these uh, two cards have been added and it's just random. And uh, as per hazard, these are two cards which are now uh, in the starter deck as well, but let me just restart that. Um, and go to a new journey here and here there are two black hole is a new card by the way so that's uh, uh, flawlessly going into the next part of this uh, devlog um this is the black hole card so let me now start just start the um sandbox here Let's get the, the sandbox up and running uh not the battle but the sandbox here we are and i've got a black hole um, preset here. Let's start the black hole card. Fine. Uh, little bug there, which we're going to have to fix. Here is the black hole card. Reduce all enemy attack to three if it is more. So you see here, this one has eight enemy attack, five and eighteen. So if you play this card, they're all three. So that's the black hole card. It's two as a cost, uh, as an energy cost. It's that's pretty high, uh, but nevertheless, it's a cool card. Um, let's see how this is implemented then. So the black hole card, here it is. Uh, the black hole cost, of course, costs two. And it's a special function called reduce attack. And if I just go, here we are. In the command functions, we uh, already have uh, in the use card, of course, we will see if that special function is you do reduce attack. And then we're just going to pick all the enemies that still have health, whose next action equals damage, and whose intent amount is greater than the special value of that card. So here you'll see that the special value of that card is going to be through the one. So in the standard level of that card, the everything is reduced to three. 
Uh, in the second level of the card, everything is reduced to one, and uh, in the third level, highest level, it's reduced to one, of course. So that's uh, the way it works. Furthermore, I've added some extra things here to the artifact, no, not to the artifact, sorry, to the crafting. So a lot of extra crafting items here. You'll see uh, this this carap and the uh, draft of the titans and roots and dragons eggs and a shell etc and what i've done then is i've also added some extra spell box so i already had the the images of the spell box but now uh, i've already added some extra things here for example the lore of seth it will uh, generate an intense scroll by uh, using an empty scroll, a pine cone, and a feather. Uh, here we have the Book of the Builders, which will uh, result in a regeneration scroll. Uh, so basically for every scroll here, I've added a spell book. And these spell books are now available. They can be picked up and they can be used in the crafting area, of course. So that's also something I did. Um, so let's revisit the statistics here you see that we have an extra dictionary statistics card next to the statistics because i don't want to pollute all of the card statistics uh, inside the statistics uh, dictionary here because we're going to have more than 200 cards when the game is done i think so uh, this is uh, to be stored separately and i'll use this one here uh, to um, go into um so here we are in the preview and in the preview we see if the card statistics has that object we say the card has been used so many times and uh, otherwise we say the card has never been used and then let's see we have function called increase card statistic and of course the card name is in the statistics in dictionary if it's already there we just add one else we add one and we call save statistics and this one is of course used uh, here it's called once whenever we use a card we increase that statistic so very simple stuff um, uh, all arranged well so it's um, in there to stay and then the last thing i'm going to show you is i've added some extra map logic so we've got this current map this is blur, uh, current map here we have the current map and the current city map so and there's the current map type so what's this these three work in conjunction so if the map type is set to island we'll move to the this island map but as you recall from an island you can do into a city which city that is will be stored in the current city map of course and the current map is the island map which is being stored here if we go out of the city then we go we need to go return to this island map of course so those this deliberately two maps and then depending on where we are when we stop the game and where we have to re-enter the game when we start it again we need to save this current map type here so this current map type is also uh, something that we will save in the local storage here when um we come in here and when the fade out is uh, finished here then you'll see then we uh, we set the game mode to map we set the map to uh, to um to island and then we set the map type uh, to the city map is none the map type is city map island so this is where we uh, start our character selection actually so um this is deliberately done and of course these things are saved into the local storage so that uh, next time we start the game we can check that are we in the map of the island or are we in the map of the city and depending on the result of that question we will move into the island or the city uh, so it's three uh, variables that work in conjunction actually so that's mostly it uh, this week so i hope you liked it um, Please like and subscribe and see you next time.